Hi, I'm Matt Mills, and in today's segment, we're going to work on the first step to my approach on how to teach your horse how to spin. The main focus today is that your horse has a clear understanding of what you're asking him to do, which obviously it's a spin or a pivot. If your horse understands its job, for sure everything is always going to be better. Today I'm going to demonstrate on a four-year-old gelding named Colonel Chickalina. We call him Colonel for short. This horse is special to me because I started him from the very beginning. Now he's been out and shown and done really well, so he's a finished reining horse. But don't worry, this is the exact same drill that I do on green horses as well. And even if you don't have a reiner and you're just trying to improve your horse's pivot, this is exactly how you're going to do it. So let's jump on and get started. Okay, so here we go. Let's get started on this first step. Two things we need to be able to steer the horse or control those shoulders with the neck rein. We need to be able to move that horse forward with our legs. Doesn't matter whether you're on a two-year-old or whether you're on a broke horse. Obviously with this one, uh, I just don't have to ask as much to get a response. Now, another thing too, it's not just, takes two to tango, right? So the rider's involved in this also. It's not always about improving the horse. Make sure you're not leaning off to the left or off to the right or front or back. You want to be sitting neutral so your cues are real clear. Now let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that neck rein over, start the spin, use the leg if necessary, and then release back to neutral with those hands and see if the horse will stay in that spin on its own. Now you see there, Colonel, when I release there, he kind of hesitates, kind of stops, maybe he wants to walk out. I'm going to let him make that mistake and then I'm going to fix him, apply pressure by using a neck rein or a leg. So when you get started with this, remember you have to keep it simple. It's about taking your time and trying to figure out what is your horse thinking. We all want to make things complicated. Trust me, this is how I do my two-year-olds all the way to the show horses. Think for instance, like if that horse doesn't want to stay in the spin, why is it? I don't think it has anything to do with the maneuver. It's all pressure release. It's because they'd rather be outside because you don't mess with them as much, let's say. So you just want to make sure that you've got things set up to where the horse always understands. Now again, with him, he's so broke that it doesn't take much to get a response, but it'd be the same on a two-year-old. I just may have to ask a little more. Now notice there, see I'm sitting real still. He's going around, he hesitated there, but he didn't stop moving, so I don't do anything. And I'm gonna reach down and pet him as a reward. So if that horse is looking left or right, it's probably because they want to go that direction. So uh, if that's the case, let him go over there and then we apply pressure and make him move out. Now we can take him out in a trot here if you have a horse that's a little lazier, bring him into that spin, release. He stopped, walked out. I let him do that, which that's where a lot of people get in trouble. They want to try to hold him on that turn, and the horse doesn't really get it. Look at that. Good. Release. Look at him drop his head. That means he's definitely relaxed, right? The horse that's walking around out in the pasture has usually got its head down. Notice where my hands are, real neutral and low. Good. Good. Real simple. This should look like an easy exercise because it is. The hardest thing is to stay disciplined and keep it simple. Pull them across nice and soft. You should be noticing now your horse is getting lighter, which means they move off the rein quicker. Okay, there. That looks really nice. It feels like he'd go around and around and around. I go ahead and stop there as reward. Beginning, you might just be trying to get one revolution. Sometimes it might be two. Now we're ready to start in one hand. It's the same thing. We've already got him in two now. Sit neutral, lay the rein on, don't force. Not trying to get speed on this step. Look at how his head's down, relax. Now he's also not laboring, he's going around freely, right? Meaning I'm not having to beg him with my spur every step of the way. We'll go off and try this other side. Make sure he settles before I start. Always watching to make sure the horse is calm and confident. Lay that rein real nice. So right now, on this particular day, Colonel here looks a little better to the left and the right. Sit real still, and I'm just waiting. So it's real clear. If he stays in the spin, I leave him alone. No pressure. If he walks out, I just put a little rein or leg. And reach down and pet him, which that's always a good thing to do. Go walk him out here doesn't matter you can start him from the moving you can start him from the standstill I think a lazier horse you want to start while moving you know looking back on it even myself uh, when I'm out there showing and competing 
if I reflect back, a lot of times if there's some issues with the turn, if you go back and really work on just the basics, you'll find that at some point that horse probably got a little confused or scared. And if you just simplify things, it always comes back. I don't know how many times I've tried to come up with all these complicated solutions to try to perfect what I'm doing. And if I just go back to basics and do them real well, things always get better. Now the last thing you can do if you want to really try to make this precise is walk a circle one direction and then stop and spin the other way. You, know, you got that horse kind of focused one way and then when you go the other way you're working on their reaction time. You don't have to have any of these drills perfect to be able to show. This always, you know, it's a constant work in progress. Notice how relaxed he is. I'm always watching for that. Okay, let's go back to the right. Really good. A little bit of a hesitation there, but not bad. I'm not going to pick on him because what am I after? I just want him to go around and around and around on this first step. I want him to understand that if he keeps his feet moving, I'm going to leave him alone. We're not talking about how he's turning yet. All right, now for those of you that, you know, you're not buying in, you think that there's some sort of trick going on, I want you to really see here without this bridle that it's purely neck rein and leg. Okay, now this is obviously the finished product here. He's real soft, but you could do this on about any horse. I'm not telling you to go out and do that. But I just want, to, want you to see your same thing. See, he walked out there, lay that rein, use a little leg if necessary. With him, I don't need much. Some other horses, you might have to put a little more pressure. His form's not maybe perfect there, but pretty good. And he maybe has his head lower without the bridle. That's interesting there. He's licking his lips. This horse looks awful relaxed, which that's the most important thing. Go back the other way just to show you that we can go to go both directions. Notice how quiet I'm sitting. It looks so simple and easy, but trust me, it's real hard to stay disciplined and not want to help the horse. I want to help him because I know, hey, if we do this, that, and the other, we can get a little more speed. So if you've done your homework on step one, your horse should have a clear understanding that it's better to stay in the spin than to go out of it. You should notice that your horse is more relaxed. They should have a, you know, maybe a lowered head position and things should just seem like they're coming a lot smoother, like it's just making a lot more sense to that horse. So go out now and look for step two and get ready for the next thing.